I'm with Whitman County, Washington. Uh, those of you that may not know Washington, uh, I am just south of Spokane, a uh, large farming community. We're also home of Washington State University Cougars uh, in Pullman, Washington. Uh, Whitman County has a lot of bridges, so I get involved in a lot of bridge, uh, bridge work, uh, bridge related replacements, uh, retrofits, things like that. So I want to talk a little bit about a small bridge that we replaced last year. Uh, we replaced between, uh, say, one or two bridges and six or seven bridges every single year. Um, and so this one is kind of a particularly interesting case. So I'm going to talk about the Celtese Warner Bridge. Uh, this was a replacement for a 1952 uh, all wood structure um, uh, that was 30 feet long and 20 feet wide. There's a picture of that there on your screen. The original wood structure was rebuilt in 1986 on short wood piles with wood back walls. That was real common in the county. We literally had over 100 of these there for a while. The bridge was experiencing a lot of deterioration and was susceptible to scouring and was scheduled for replacement in uh, 2020. <clears throat> the replacement bridge, as with many in Whitman County, was planned to have a longer span in order to improve the hydraulic opening of the bridge. It also makes it easier to build our bridges with new foundations behind the existing wood piles. Um, uh, the channel, this is called Willow Creek at this location. In fact, this is really close to the Idaho border. Um, uh, it has an average main channel width of 20 feet. So this is not a large bridge, but when you have a lot of these, they tend to get expensive replacing them all the time. The road approach on both sides of this channel is normal to the channel alignment. Uh, therefore, neither the existing bridge nor the replacement required any skew. That makes it much easier on my crews when they rebuild bridges. One of the goals of the replacement bridge is to open the channel wider and raise the bottom quarter of the bridge above the 100 year recurrence flood level. So the road and the bridge have gravel surfaces. Uh, so this all uh, lends itself well to the kind of bridge we replaced with. We do have a dedicated uh, bridge crew of four people. Uh, we have the equipment and experience to replace small bridges with county forces. So that's kind of an important point because a lot of people do not have their own bridge crew, but we do, we do have the ability to build bridges. In the past, Whitman County has traditionally constructed concrete superstructure bridges. In fact, we did right up until the year before this. Uh, we build uh, all of the uh, foundations and all of the site work, and we contract for the casting and delivery of pre-stressed concrete girders uh, that are installed on our foundations. For this project, the Celtees Warner Bridge, Whitman County competitively bid the manufacturer of both steel and concrete superstructures. <clears throat> The successful bidder with the lowest cost was a module, excuse me, modular rolled beam steel structure supplied by Contact. At the time, it was a big R bridge. So Whitman County has been building bridges, uh, again, like I said, uh, with county forces for a long time. Uh, typical earth materials consist of soft, firm silt and clay materials over basalt bedrock. That's common for probably 90% of our bridge sites. The alluvium is not typically suitable for supportive structures, especially when considering scour potential. And the, you know, the, the steepness of the stream can determine what we do, but typically we're driving piles. Uh, therefore, you know, most of our bridges are on steel H piles. You see a picture here of, this is our bridge crew guy with a track hoe and a pile driver driving a steel H pile for this particular bridge. The depth of the salt in Whitman County ranges from five feet to more than 30 feet. The county has found it cheaper and simpler to simply drive steel piles to bedrock and then build tieback anchors as mitigation if the final bearing depth does not satisfy all of the scour requirements. About 10 years ago, the county upgraded our pile driver. We used to have a, an old style falling weight pile driver. And we went to this one that we have now, which is a pneumatic, excuse me, a hydraulic pile driver that mounts to the uh, tip of our track hoe. The number of piles that we drive is really dependent on the, the weight of the bridge, the loads of the bridge, uh, and the length of the bridge. <clears throat> so for abutment uh, pile cap, rather than forming and casting concrete, uh, which takes time, and uh, usually these are in very remote locations, getting concrete there is not always simple. Uh, county installs a top plate or a pile cap using the same size H pile that we use for the piles, and then just weld it on top. Uh, by making bridges longer than the one that was replaced and the piles can be driven behind the existing piles and away from the channel. Um, 
You can see in that upper right photo, you can see where the old foundation is still in place while we're driving piles for the new. Um, this also simplifies the permitting by the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Once the piles and the caps are completed, the old foundations can be isolated and removed with a lot less disturbance to the channel. Also an important part in Washington State because of fish and wildlife requirements. <clears throat> the final dimensions for the superstructure on this project were 35 feet long by 28 feet wide. Not a huge bridge, but a, definitely something uh, that fits that channel better. The bottom of the new bridge needed to be raised above the creek further than the original wood bridge, so the road was raised approximately a foot and a half to accommodate the new superstructure. The module Modular rolled beam steel bridge consisted, consisted of three modules that could be shipped to the site on one truck. You see them being offloaded actually on our shop site in that photo. Each module had two weathering steel rolled beam girders fully assembled in corrugated steel deck and side dams were attached to the modules for easy placement of the gravel riding surface. So this was something new for us too, actually putting a gravel riding surface on a bridge. Modules are simply set on the abutments and connected together with simple lateral connections for easy erection. This lower photo is actually of our um, detour bridge that we installed that we bought about uh, six or seven years ago. <clears throat> so here's a few pictures of the two girder super, uh, the, of the girder superstructure modules being erected. The modules are shipped to the site and assembled with corrugated steel deck, side dam, simple cross frame diaphragms and guardrail stubs. The front end loader and the excavators pick up the modules and place them on the abutments with the bearing assemblies. <clears throat> the modules are connected together using simple connection details. The guardrail stubs, guardrails, and back wall are all installed. And then the gravel road surface is installed. In addition to the direct cost, um, there's an uh, indirect cost associated with various superstructures. With concrete superstructure option, uh, Whitman County would need to hire a crane service to lift the, the concrete girders into place. Uh, that can run anywhere from about four or five thousand to eight thousand dollars, and also create a real hassle for scheduling. The steel beam girders that are then lifted with county-operated excavators and a large front-end loader already on site, making this a much simpler option. Selecting a bridge structure that can easily be handled by one or two excavators significantly reduces overall project costs, shortens the construction sign at time and makes it easier to schedule. Modular steel bridges in particular fit this product category as they're relatively lightweight, easy to handle and fit match well due to the quality of shop fabrication. This project was completed during the summer in accordance with the Washington Fish and Wildlife Permit, which in Washington state uh, really governs a lot of how we do bridges. Um, a lot of it has to do with anadromous fish, although we don't have any in this particular creek. It guides their decisions statewide. This was started on June 15th and completed and opened to traffic on July 15th. Uh, by the way, our bridge crew is only four people. So for four people to build a bridge in one month was actually pretty amazing. It included the installation of the temporary due per, uh, detour bridge, which is a single lane bridge, uh, the stream site isolation and erosion control measures, pile installation, pile cap installation, welding on of seismic anchor pins, placement and completion of superstructure and associated road building activities was completed in roughly four weeks, which for us on four tens is about 16 days. Whitman County sought competitive quotes for the manufacture and delivery of both the steel and concrete structures. The cost for the concrete alternative was $82,000 and the cost for the modular steel beam superstructure was $56,000. So there was a fairly big, the big difference uh, was in the concrete versus the steel superstructure. With the cost of labor and equipment, the pile foundation and permitting, total bridge project uh, was about $160,000 or about $162 per square foot. Uh, now for a few takeaway items on this project. Uh, one of the things people always ask me is if we have a special skill set of our bridge crew and no, we don't. We have a couple of people on our bridge crew that are good with welding, good with equipment. And so we don't have any special certifications or any special skill sets to work with the steel, just good welding skills. Uh, another takeaway um, 
if a small agency wanted to build this kind of structure, they don't necessarily have to have a pile driver. There's lots of different uh, places where you could use other kinds of foundations like a precast footing. Uh, we've used hill thicker baskets before. Uh, you could do a geosynthetic reinforced abutments, all presuming that you have good foundation materials and not a big scour issue. So a couple of other takeaways, uh, because uh, I've been working with the short stand span steel bridge alliance for a couple of years. Uh, the superstructure costs are competitive with other bridge material types. In fact, I would suggest they're typically for this size of structure anyway, less expensive. There's some additional benefits. They're lightweight, <clears throat> resulting in economies in required construction equipment and substructure costs. And uh, steel modular bridges allow for ease of erection, fast erection times, and modules fit together well due to the fabrication quality. And a couple other quick takeaways uh, to close out. Um, steel is North America's number one recycled material with over 90% of the steel in the beam coming from recycled materials. In Washington state in particular, <clears throat> this is becoming a may, way more important issue uh, as we're looking at reuse and, and recycling of materials. Steel is also reusable where removed girders can be repurposed on other bridges. And we've actually done that a couple of times before with older steel bridges. And then uh, with modular bridges, the entire bridge can be moved and repurposed to another bridge. This is uh, very evident in the fact that we have a 45 foot long um, detour bridge that we can pick up and put anywhere. That 45 feet, even though this is only a 30 foot opening or a, a 35 foot opening, we can place it down there and pick it up and move it all over the place and they have many times. So uh, that makes for good detours. So uh, this is the uh, sort of the final shot is that I've been working with short span steel bridge alliance for quite a while. There's a lot of good uh, things that they have available on their website. And this final uh, slide shows some of that. 